And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Thacelosaurus, which was a request from Paleo Mike 716 So thanks, VR Patreon and Discord. Could also be Thescalosaurus. I was just about to ask you because I forgot already. I'm just <laughs> trying to get in before we get a, a slew of <laughs> <laughs> messages about it. Thescalosaurus. No, Thescalosaurus is fine too. It's just that there's two versions. Apparently I'm stuck with the one. Yep. It's good. It's <laughs> as long as you're consistent. That's what's important. So it was a Neo-Ornithischian. Speaking of hard seas. Ornithischian, Ornithischian. Anyway, it lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now North America. Neo-Ornithischians, they wore their teeth down unevenly from chewing and they developed sharp ridges so they could break down tough plant food. Thessalosaurus was one of the last dinosaurs before non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. It walked on two legs, it had a long tail and short arms. The tail had ossified tendons so it wasn't that flexible. Thessalosaurus also had sturdy legs, small wide hands, and a long head with a pointed snout. There's a few different species. The type species is Thessalosaurus neglectus. It's bigger than other basal Neornithischians, which are about one to two meters long, over three to six and a half feet. But with Thessalosaurus, the skeleton's pretty well known, and it's estimated to grow about eight to 13 feet or two and a half to four meters long. It was a heavily built dinosaur, estimated to weigh about 450 to 660 pounds or 200 to 300 kilograms. It also had a broad rib cage and therefore a wide back. Large, thin, flat, mineralized plates that were found next to the sides of the ribs. It's unclear what they were for, but it's possible they started as cartilage and became bone as the animal grew up. Hmm. It also had robust limbs. Its leg bones had been described as like clubs. <laughs> it, Those do sound robust. Yeah. It probably wasn't too fast based on its heavy build and legs. And the upper leg was also longer than the shin. It had four toes on its feet, hoof-like toe tips, five fingers on each hand that were short and broad, the hands. It had long rod-like bones over its eyes, so it looked like it had heavy bony eyebrows. It was probably herbivorous. It had a long, narrow beak, small pointed teeth, as well as a ridge along its upper jaws, the tooth-bearing cheekbones, and a ridge on its lower jaws, which may mean that it had muscular cheeks. It's useful for chewing plants? Yes. In 2022, Michael Hudgens and others studied the cellosaurus teeth, and they found they differed in size, shapes, ornamentations, denticles, and wear patterns. So this, along with having a narrow beak, may mean that the cellosaurus was a selective feeder, and it probably browsed close to the ground. So it's kind of a picky eater. In 2000... A skeleton of Thessalosaurus, known as Willow, was described as having a four-chambered heart and aorta. That specimen's on display at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, if you want to see it. The fossils were found in 1993 in South Dakota, and scientists did CT scans and suggested that the heart turned to soap because it was buried in airless conditions, and then fossilized and turned to geotite, which is an iron mineral. And they also found that Thessalosaurus had an elevated metabolic rate. It was warm-blooded. That's cool. You do not see a lot of preserved hearts. Well, there's a lot of skepticism here. (laughs) The authors suggested the heart was similar to that of an ostrich with four chambers. But then a year later, in 2001, Timothy Rowe and others found that it wasn't a heart. It was a concretion that built up an extra dense part of sedimentary rock. The specimen willow was found in the Hell Creek Formation in fluvial settings, which don't usually preserve soft tissues, so there's a lot of rivers and streams, and the team found it unlikely that a dinosaur heart could fossilize in these conditions before bacteria consumed it. They also said, quote, ironstone concretions are notorious for producing suggestive and misleading shapes, end quote, and in this case, the shapes and the positions just weren't quite right. Mm. They found things like the aorta lacked arteries coming from it. And they argued there was another concretion preserved behind the right leg. Oh, so unless it had an extra heart there. (laughs) Or just showed like, yes, this could be a concretion because there's another concretion. Gotcha. Now, the original authors did agree it was a concretion, but they said it formed around and partially preserved parts of the heart. It makes some sense. There's a lot of iron in blood, so you could see how that might happen. Yeah. But then a study in 2011 by Timothy Cleland and others, they did CT scans, histology, x-rays, and more, and they found the object was a concretion of sand from the burial environment and not a heart. 
though there might be isolated areas of tissues preserved. They found the heart didn't have four chambers and instead had three areas that were unconnected so it couldn't be the heart because it needs to be connected for blood to flow through. I see. So it sounds like they found that it definitely wasn't a heart, a preserved heart, and they found what the concretion formed around, but they couldn't rule out the possibility that there was a little bit of heart somewhere in there maybe. Maybe, yeah. But it's very far from the original interpretation that this is a preserved heart. Yes. That could be why when we were at the museum in 2013, I think, I don't think there was anything on display about this because I was thinking, we were at that museum. How come we didn't see it? They might have taken down signage about it if that was the case. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot of debate about this. The Cellosaurus has also made an appearance in Dinosaurs, The Final Day with Sir David Attenborough. Oh, that's the one that was about the The Tannis site? Oh, yes. The Tannis site or Tannis site. Yeah, I, when I was looking it up, I was pretty confident that Tanus was the more accurate pronunciation, but I've only heard people say Tanus site since then, so maybe I should switch. <laughs> maybe, but it's an important site because there's all this stuff that shows what happened when the asteroid hit. Yes. And in this documentary, they show a Thacelosaurus leg. Paul Barrett said the leg has skin impressions that show it was scaly and that there's no evidence of disease or pathologies or it being scavenged, no bite marks. So it seems the leg was ripped off quickly and the dinosaur died almost instantly. So it's possible it died the day that the asteroid hit Earth, that the one that wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs. Somehow the leg got ripped off in the process of a tsunami or something. All the violence, yes. Oof. But not all paleontologists agree with this because it's possible... Some animals died before the asteroid hit, and then they got ripped apart the day the asteroid hit and buried in a way that makes it seem like they died from the asteroid. Oh, I see what you mean. Because you don't have to be alive to get ripped apart by a tsunami. Exactly. And if you died just the day before or something like that, you know, when Even a time. week before, I yeah. guess, depending on the environment. Well, anyway, we talk at length about the end Cretaceous extinction in our upcoming I Know Paleo Mass Extinction Saga. So if you want to hear more about that, that one will come out in a few months because we're going over five mass extinctions. Yeah. <laughs> Tune into our I Know Paleo on our Patreon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Patreon.com slash I Know Dino. Yep. <laughs> but back to Thacelosaurus. So in 2014, Clint Boyd described the skull of Thacelosaurus neglectus. The skull wasn't known at all until 1974 when... A different species, Thacelosaurus edmontonensis, was synonymized with Thacelosaurus neglectus by Peter Galton. So I should say the skull for Thacelosaurus neglectus wasn't known. And kind of recently, in episode 492, we talked about a study earlier this year by David Button and Lindsay Zano, where they made a 3D model of the inside of the brain of Thacelosaurus, again, that willow specimen, and found it had a powerful sense of smell, a sensitive vestibular system, but terrible hearing, which... All may mean it was a burrower. Oh, yeah, I remember that now. I think that's what inspired Paleo Mike 716 to request this dinosaur of the day. So Thacelosaurus, the brain was average or below average for its body size, but its olfactory bulbs, which help with the sense of smell, make up about 3% of the endocast volume, which is larger than modern birds and similar to modern rabbits and pikas. It would have used its smell to help find food, and the smell would help it stay away from predators and identify its family and young underground. And with its snout, it could root around in the dirt. Having the powerful arms may have also helped it dig holes. And the sensitive vestibular system, along with the relatively small brain, not great of hearing, but a great sense of smell, is all good for burrowing. Yeah, because I, I, the vestibular system is basically about knowing your orientation. And if you're underground in the dark... It's a little trickier to do with like vision. So (laughs) having a really good inner ear for that is extremely helpful. But there's no preserved burrows found like with Erichter Dromaeus, at least not yet. So maybe Thacelosaurus spent some time underground and some time above. For the hearing, it probably couldn't tell the difference between low and high frequency sounds very well. It probably had a hearing range similar to some crocodilians and squamates, lizards and snakes, but not as good as other dinosaurs like Desolidosaurus. Thacelosaurus could probably hear best between about 1,100 to 1,200 hertz, with an upper limit of over 3,000 hertz. And for comparison, Dicelotosaurus is estimated to have a hearing range of somewhere between 350 and 3850 hertz. Okay. 
So the upper limit is just over 3,000 compared to just under 4,000. So you've got maybe 25% more frequency on the upper end. Yes. I guess when you're underground, there isn't a lot of high frequency stuff. I guess not. Now, the type species of Thesalosaurus is Thesalosaurus neglectus. The genus name Thesalosaurus means godlike or marvelous or wondrous combined with lizard. Wow. That is a very lofty name. It is. There's three species, Neglectus, Garbanii, and Asinae boyensis. The fossils have been found in Alberta in the Scholard Formation, as well as Saskatchewan in the Frenchman Formation in Canada, and Wyoming in the Lance Formation, South Dakota and Montana in the Hell Creek Formation, and Colorado in the Laramie Formation in the U.S. So all sort of northwestern North America. Yes. And these fossils were first found in 1891 by John Bell Hatcher and William Utterback in Wyoming. It wasn't until 1913, though, that Charles Gilmore found it in the collections of the Smithsonian and named it Thesalosaurus neglectus. And that species name means neglected because it took a while. Oh, that's why. Okay. Not because it was stuck underground. Nope. Being all alone. I guess I didn't know that back in 1913. Stuck in the collections all alone. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they would have named it godlike if they knew it was a burrower. Something about burrowing makes you seem not so <laughs> impressive. Well, they thought it was related to Camptosaurus at the time, which is interesting. In 1913, Gilmore wrote, quote, the skull and neck are the only important parts missing. Those are pretty important parts. Yeah, well, he wrote a more detailed description of the fossil in 1915 after it was prepared. And over the years, other species have been assigned to Thessalosaurus, but were later reclassified. William Morris in 1976 described a specimen with a partial skull, parts of the vertebrae, and finger bones that were found in South Dakota as an unidentified species of Thessalosaurus, but Peter Galton later classified it as Bugenosaura infernalis, which means large-cheeked lizard belonging to the lower regions. Morris also named another specimen, question mark, Thessalosaurus garbanii, wasn't sure if it belonged to the genus. That's why the question mark. It was based on a partial leg that was a third larger than other Thesalosaurus specimens, as well as neck and backbones found in Montana in the U.S. That one was discovered by Harley Garbanai. That's how it got its name. And it was estimated to be about 15 feet or four and a half meters long. In 2009, Clint Boyd and others found Bugenosaurus to be a synonym of Thesalosaurus. Did the same skulls. And they found that Thesalosaurus Garbanii was valid. They also found there was a possible unnamed third species based on a specimen with some unique features. In 2011, Caleb Brown and others named that third species Thesalosaurus assiniboyensis based on a small, articulated, nearly complete skeleton found in Saskatchewan, and that includes a skull with a brain case. The species name refers to, quote, the District of Assiniboia a regional administrative unit of the Northwest Territories, Canada, from 1882 to 1905. And that eventually became Saskatchewan and Alberta. The district is named after the Assiniboine First Nations people. Now, they found that Thesalosaurus was one of the most abundant dinosaurs in the Frenchman Formation in Saskatchewan. And in that formation, four partial skeletons have been found, as well as a lot of isolated bones. Interestingly, it's not a dominant dinosaur in the Hell Creek. One study found it was maybe 5% of all articulated skeletons in the Hell Creek Formation, compared to Thesalosaurus being about 31% in the Frenchman Formation. Whoa, that is a huge difference considering it's basically just crossing a border. Yeah. The fossils of the small skeleton were first found in the Frenchman Formation in 1968, and they were articulated. It might not be skeletally mature, but it's considered to be a distinct species because it's only 13% smaller than Thesalosaurus neglectus, but it still has unique features in the skull that probably wouldn't have changed as it grew up. <laughs> the bone bed of multiple dinosaurs have been found in the Frenchman Formation, including some isolated limb bones from small Thesalosaurus, which might be from juveniles. There are some other juveniles known, but mostly from teeth. And many Thesalosaurus fossils have been found in sandstones that represent channel environments. So it seems that Thesalosaurus frequented stream channels, and then when it died, it may have been in or near rivers, which makes it easier to bury and fossilize. So it lived in coastal plain environments like swamps and marshes. It may have lived near streams. And other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place as Thesalosaurus include the Ceratopsids Triceratops and Taurosaurus, the Hadrosaurid Montosaurus, the Ankylosaur Ankylosaurus, 
<laughs> the pachycephalosaur, pachycephalosaurus, as well as theropods, including Ornithomimus, Troodon, and Tyrannosaurus. It's all the greatest hits of their groups. Mm-hmm. 